I'm Travis Murray with The Pinball Company. Many of you out there have started attending JAWS launch parties across the nation. And if you're watching this and you have no idea what any of that means, well, locations across the country host pinball tournaments in which the central game being celebrated is typically the latest Stern pinball release. In this case, JAWS. If this piques your interest, the link in the description down below is to all currently known launch parties. Go check it out, get out, meet some of the people in your local pinball community. That being said, this video will be for the ones that have a general understanding of the rule set already. If that ain't you, no worries, just check out my previous JAWS video, How to Play JAWS Pinball for a rundown on all the basics. If that is you, well, you're in the right place. The biggest thing to understand about JAWS Pinball is that it is very situational. The game is very much a go where the game is taking you with the layout and rule set. And what I mean by this is because of the very nature of how you start encounters at every major shot, you're forced to skillfully choose the direction you're going to go as opposed to straight out selecting your modes like you found in previous Keith Elwin games such as Avengers Infinity Quest, Jurassic Park, and Godzilla. Generally speaking, if you want to play this game with your brain completely off, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can hit anything that's lit and find yourself making progress and advancing in the game and having a good time regardless. But if you want to take it a step further, I would keep this in mind. Are you going to focus on encounters? Do you go for multipliers? Are you going to prioritize multiball, gear awards, fish finder modes and features, quince challenges? Are you all in on bounty hunts? Or do you focus on all the above? Alrighty, and before we begin with gameplay, let's go over a few of the things to consider and some different tactics that you can use on this game to, you know, help you out a little bit with your launch party. Now, first and foremost, the biggest thing to notice is on the upper part of the play field, you do have two billboards there. You have one on the center ramp or the north beach, and you have one on the right ramp, and I can't think of that beach off the top of my head, but the main thing is, is that you need to pay attention to those billboards, especially whenever you're trapped up. There's lots of things that could be happening at one time during this game, but a lot of people that I've talked to don't even realize sometimes that that right ramp billboard is there. And it's important because it'll let you know when a bounty hunt is ready to start, it'll let you know when gear is ready to be collected. And those two things can, can make a difference in your game and can be important for your game. But whenever you're using the flip lock, just consider this, use it as a way to not just stage the ball just randomly because if you're stuck on the left flipper and you don't have any shots that are lit to the right there's really no reason to use a uh, flip lock you want to make sure that the ball comes back to the right flipper you hit your lit shots you go from there but the biggest thing with this is too is that you can use that flip lock to definitely hold on to the ball and then hit jackpots at will just consider what your sequence is consider where the shots are lit and kind of consider what your strengths are with that. So a way to get to that easily, some people use the pond, which is the reel right there, the pond attack shot or the reel shot. I prefer to use the wave ramp or where the beach panic shot is. That's the, the ramp between the spinner and the center ramp. You'll hit it back there and it'll feed the upper flipper. That being said, one of the things to strongly consider too is use that mini flipper in order to slow down the ball. And what I mean by that is if you hit that wave ramp and you do not use that mini flipper to just hold the ball for a split second and then drop it down the right end lane, it might rattle. It might come down there too quickly. You might not get a, get a clean shot. So you're better off always using that mini flipper to control the speed of the ball. I highly recommend doing that. I've seen some people forget that it's there and not use it at all. Just consider that. The other part to the mini flipper that you got to consider as well, if you're going to go for quick shots, the only reason that I can really find to go for quick shots right now is if you're planning on getting gear. And a big reason for that is, is because you're automatically putting the ball out of control. So consider that. The other thing is too, is consider whether or not you want to actually play the fish finder targets or the fish finder modes or features. And the reason why I say that is, is because you got to consider if you fire off a shot there, you are going horizontal, you are getting out of control, and you might be in the middle of a mode, and you might be cooking pretty good with that, and that might be the only points you need. So just stay aware of where you're at in the game and whether or not you actually need to use your fish finder targets or not. That being said, it is a viable strategy just to focus on those 
and kind of use them along with encounters because because you have your night search multi ball, you have your cast and catch, which is the upscale hurry up that goes up to 30. You have a super life ring, which can come in very handy on that right hand side. So that's just some examples right there. The other big part to this is your bailout shots. This game is heavy on bailout shots. And what I would consider as the main bailout shots for this particular game is the left ramp, center ramp, and right ramp. So that's really what I focus on. I do not use the spinner at all for a bailout. I do not use the real target or the real spinner for a bailout. And I certainly try not to use the shark or the boat captive ball for a bailout as often as I can. And the reason for this, for this is, is that if you're using that wave ramp or the center ramp on the left-hand side, at worst, you're maybe not completing the shot and hitting the chum bucket, advancing your chum line. At best, you are completing your shot and you're getting back under control. If that ball happens to go up the wave ramp but doesn't make it all the way around, comes back, most copies I have seen actually feed the left flipper fairly decent. So just be aware of that. So that's a pretty good place to park your ball if you don't know where else to go with it. And the other reason why I use the right-hand side is just because you might have Quint Shack ready to go, you might have gear, you might have something there ready to go, and it's generally a safe shot to where even if you miss it, you're hitting that shark, that shark tower target, you might accidentally hit the pop bumper, and it's kind of it's really not too dangerous in my opinion anyways in the games that I've played so far. Some other things that we need to consider is the best encounters to use and for single ball and the best encounters to use for multi ball. Now, this is just my opinion. This is just based on playing several games or several dozen games at this point. I feel like I've played it a lot so far. I would strongly consider, at least for me, and again, it, mileage may vary. It depends on setups. It depends on your skill level. It depends on what you're comfortable with. My preference for the modes that I'd rather play without a multi ball or in single ball is raft attack on that right ramp pond which is on the rill and scars which is on the center ramp beach panic which is on the wave ramp and the night swim on the spinner i'm okay with playing those with multi-ball and you can still play any of these modes with multi-ball it's not a big deal it's just for my play style and my skill set i feel more comfortable playing those in single ball because i know i can rip off shots i know i can kind of focus in a little bit more to try to maximize the value of those modes but again, Beach Panic on the wave ramp, great mode to play and stack with the multi-ball just because a lot of shots are lit. You can spray it all, all around. And the final thing to really talk about before we get started is gear. You have to decide pretty quick if you're all in on using the gear, if you wanna know how to use the gear, you have to decide because you have to make decisions during the game, especially when you're on the left flipper, you have to use that right flipper to move the gear around. So you have to actively make a decision on what you want to be on for your insert in order to activate that on the right ramp. And then that way too, that pretty much gives you an opportunity to decide how you want to play the game. For instance, if you know that you're going to keep taking aim at quick shots over and over and over again, it might be useful to take shark cage, which is the upper middle insert that's right there. And the reason for that is, is because it gives you a ball save off the fin target and you know, something like that. If you know, you're going to be doing quick shots, that means you're going to be hitting the fin target over and over again. So you could consider that if you want to get quicker to like a bounty hunt, if you're going to focus on that dart might be the way to go. If you're all in for rescue multi-ball, which is hitting the shark tower targets and lighting beach goers out there, the orange inserts, Maybe binoculars is the way to go, just because if you hit that, it lights two instead of one beachgoers, and you could do that upwards of three times. So that's something to consider as well. Or you could simply just play through the game, not worry about it. And if you can tell that you're close to cashing out or you have an opportunity to cash out because you have three or four gear and you're getting closer to six, maybe you go that direction. So other than that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to get started right now. And I love this intro, by the way. Excellent intro. It takes maybe like 40 seconds or so. So we'll just sit here awkwardly staring at it, waiting. But yeah, so the main thing to do, what I would highly recommend is always be short plunging your skill shots. The way that the skill shots work at this point 
There's just, I don't see any reason to go like flying past it. I would just, I want to get my skill shot one, skill shot two, skill shot three. The reason being is skill shot two and three, light your gear. The other thing to consider with this game, it's very much a go wherever the game takes you. So right now, the meta for me is just to take what's in front of me, whatever flipper I happen to be on, that's the direction I'm going to go with the game. So prime example right there, even if you miss your skill shot, no sweat, because you have the ball saved, you can take a quick shot. And if you're successful, you like gear, which we did right there. And that's a big reason why I'm just, for this particular gameplay, I'm all in on the quick shots early on. And of course, hit the boat captive ball to light your encounter modes. And this is a part that's a little bit difficult because unlike previous L1 games, just like we talked about, all your encounters are out there. All the modes are out there in front of you. And I could have hit the life ring right there on the right hand side. I elected not to do it because I didn't want to put the ball out of control. But if you do that two times, it'll light your life ring with the captive ball. But we're doing dart because I want my bounty hunt and I'm doing raft attack. And you're seeing exactly why I play this in single ball because you can ramp out. And if you hit either right ramp or wave ramp, which is on that left ramp, then you can hit the center ramp to two extra shot at the fin target. And after three times, that's when you'll get your encounter or your encounter jackpot, which I believe we just need one more time right here. And you'll notice too, I'm being very careful not to hit the chum bucket. If you want to get into multi-ball quick, by all means, hit the chum bucket, go to town. I don't want to use it right now. I don't want to advance it just yet. That's why I'm avoiding it. And we completed the mode right there. So we get a plus one machete, which is big. That's our play field multiplier that we can use, or our shot multiplier that we can use. We got plenty of gear that's lit because we're hitting quick shots. And I want to go with binoculars because I know I'm making good progress on rescue. So that's an opener right there that you could do that as long as you're dialing in shots, you can get past 100 million pretty quick using raft attack, especially if you're accessing that 2x. So got some bounty hunt going. I don't mind doing that just because I can get pond attack going at the same time. And in pond attack, all I'm going to do is just hit blue shots and then the reel to get out of it. You can hit the quick shot after your real shot, and that will give you a 2x on that shot. And I don't believe I do that right now just because I want to stay under control. I want to work my way through this particular encounter because I want my machete to go up so I can use it later on in the game. And again, at the same time, I'm purposely trying to miss the chum bucket too. That's why we're not seeing it hit. That's why you're not seeing that line go. It's perfectly fine if you accidentally do it and you want to play your Jaws multi-ball early. Nothing wrong with that. Because what you want to do with the game may be a lot different than what I'm wanting to do with this particular gameplay. I've tried it some to just do multi-ball early on and just try to do as many multi-balls as possible. I've had decent scores there and I've had some very bad scores as well. The other reason too, and we're getting out of the mode right now, which is great because we get our plus one X. Another reason why too, I generally avoid it when using raft attack and pond attack is because I find that the Jaws multi-ball start or the fin target that comes up sometimes interferes with the mode too, to where some of the parts time out. And I don't want to do that right now. And then of course we get our extra ball right there. Just great. I believe we got it. Maybe beach goers. I wasn't paying attention. We got an extra ball right there though. Probably for quick shots. Maybe three quick shots gives you an extra ball. So now we're going to start working the chum bucket. Because I know at some point I need to start making some progress on it. And this would be about the time I'd plan on it. You did see me like Quinn's challenge there. You can just access that by, I believe it's spelling ORC on the wave ramp. It might be Orca all the way. One of those does the Quint shack on the right side. And one of them does the Quint's challenge on the right end lane, which I believe it's ORCA that does Quint's challenge, which is just like a combo mode right there. Sometimes I pay attention to it. Sometimes I don't. All right, so we're going to do Beach Panic right now. And this is where I want to bring in a multi-ball. So it's a big reason why I started on my chum and I started focusing in on the Beach Panic. A 
let's see where we're at. Still getting our tracker, which I did that way too early. I wish I wouldn't have done that because I should have saved that for Jaws Multiball 2, but that's okay. The bounty hunts I like to go with early on is Thresher Shark, just because if I do complete that, I get 2x for my next Jaws Multiball, which is very, very good. It could be pretty lucrative if you're in Jaws Multiball 3 or 2. Three especially, because it's a placeholder right now and there's just a lot of points involved there. And possibly Jaws 1. It's just, I, I don't know, sometimes I just struggle on Jaws 1, but Jaws 2 I could struggle too. It's like feast or famine on either way. All right, we got our first barrel attached, which means now I need to hit a yellow shot in order to start my next mode or my next multi-ball or my first multi-ball, really. Getting ahead of myself. And we're rocking and rolling. So Beach Panic, I haven't really talked about it too much. To keep this simple, just jam out on shots, hit lit shots, get through it. When you see the wave ramp on the left-hand side, go solid red. That's when you know you have your encounter jackpot. That's pretty close to being done. So you can see it's red right now. So I should, in theory, be focusing on that. The other thing you could do, and there it is right there. So now, the fin target comes up. I got to hit that to complete. Hit it on the back. There's my encounter jackpot. That's how that mode works. The other thing to consider too, when you're in this situation, make sure that you're getting your add ball, the chum bucket, just takes three hits. And then you saw a tactic that you can do with the mini flipper right there. If you have two there, what I recommend doing is flicking it up, not to do the cheese to where you just get <laughs> Uh, points or whatever they kind of took that away so definitely don't do that but the purpose is you clear out a ball let the other ball drop down and then you can stay trapped up and under control and try to play with only one ball hitting jackpots and rocking out and the whole basis of this multi ball is just hit red shots until a yellow shot lights up you're basically building up jackpot then you're converting said jackpot right there now, I forget how many you have to do off the top of my head to get the victory combos. It's probably, I would guess, at least four, three or four, somewhere right around there. So now I'm using the flip lock. You see it on the LCD screen as it's activated. There's a timer down. And now I got to miss the wave ramp. I don't want to hit that yet. So that's what you're seeing. So I could not accidentally have two balls in that flip lock. Now I'm okay with hitting the wave ramp because I know I can just get trapped up and have a clean shot on the right-hand side. And some of the different models too, or different pros out there, be sure and see if you can actually come to a trap just like that on the right ramp, just like you see, see me uh, do right there. So you can stay under control as much as possible. If you can't do that, no worries. Just make sure that you're hitting the shots that we talked about earlier, bailout shots on the fly, which could be center ramp could be wave ramp. All right, we're still moving along. Some of the things to notice too, with this new code on 0.85, you cannot hit the shark tower targets and keep advancing beachgoers and rescue multiball. The other thing to note too, currently there is an LCD bug right there. Every single time you get machete going, which is your shot multiplier, it'll still say three X on the LCD. You might have more than that. You might have less than that. It's just about knowing where you're at in the game and then checking the LCD before, like when you have your machete ready. And the other part to understand too, in order to get your machete ready, if you're not sure, you'll see it lit on the left-hand side along with Pippet. You have to hit those left stand-ups in order to light it. And then with machete, another important part to know about it is that as soon as you hit the ramps, it'll it'll access, it'll, it'll activate and light. It's not necessarily just the in-lane switch. So keep that in mind, you have to be aware of that. And I mess it up all the time. It's kind of it's it's kind of like a mind thing where you just, you have to be aware of it, you have to be looking for it. All right, now we're in Scars. A really fun mode. It's definitely a sharpshooter mode to where you want to avoid shark tower targets because that will decrease the value of the blue shots. But if you can hit the blue shots without doing that, then you will remain at a higher point level. So that's what I'm trying to do. And then I mess it up right there. So you'll see it go from six down low quick. I mess it up again and we're at two, two, five, zero. 
So right there, good example of that happening. The other background thing to consider is, of course, when you're in Bounty Hunt, make sure that you're keeping an eye on that and you're doing the task that you need to do. The LCD is telling you that you have left. And Dart, of course, is supposed to have 2x progress on that, and plus you get a plus 1x from completing that. And I think that the plus 1x is just as a result of, like, hooking a shark or capturing a shark. All right, still in scars, trying to build back up. I want to finish this. Not too worried if I don't, because I really just want the ball more than anything. Because we're also, while we're in scars, we're also working through our chum line. And there's Pippet right there. So on the right-hand side, Pippet is lit. He is important because you get to your second award, then that will light gear. And we're kind of going through the gear a little bit right now, and we're getting closer to a potential cash out with it. Also, if you're focused on those left side targets too, you'll find Fish Finder will light up, which you see with the, the uh, right hand side with, on the mini lane, you see the insert slit, go through there, hit whatever's lit on the left side on the stand up targets, that's what will start it. All right, the reel's ready to go. We can start Bounty Hunt Multiball because we hooked the shark, now we gotta try to capture the shark. So this is the newest Multiball on here, Bounty Hunt Multiball, you want to hit any shot out there that's lit, as soon as you do that, you want to hit the captive ball. The add -a ball features on here, I believe, are different according to what shark you're using. I don't think Thresher Shark has an add -a ball to it. If it does, I'm totally unaware of it. The other part to this is, is that whenever you do hit a lit shot, you will then hit the shark to decrease the shark strength. Keep that in mind. And when the ball save goes out, make sure you're staying under control. Because this, for me personally, this is a tough thing to finish. But it's very satisfying when you do. It is very heartbreaking when you get down to 1% strength and then you blow it. And you don't end up getting the shark all the way into the boat. And I think, spoiler alert, that may potentially happen here. Because the most difficult shot in the game for me is that real spinner. All right, there's me taking bell out shots right there and then trying to take a pot shot at the shark target or the captive ball. And we're going to try to do the same thing again. This is a tough part right here. Just trying for that ski jump. So a little tactic that you guys can see right there. Something to do. And then, of course, we tilt away because I really wanted to capture that shark. Very important to understand too, do not do what I just did. The reason being, you lose all your frenzy, your frenzy points and all that, feeding frenzy points. That's only available after your bonus or during your bonus phase. So I messed that up. But we did get our skill shot there, so we're just right back on that horse and we're going. Again, if you get it back, short plunging is the way to go as much as possible. I have options out here in another feeding frenzy trying to light my shark encounter also. That's why you see me taking aim at that. And each encounter that you do, as you keep progressing through the game, it just takes a few more hits to go through. And we didn't really talk all that much about how that shark works. Basically, I believe that the sequence goes shark encounter, your shark bonus or whatever it's called to where you see that insert lit and it could be worth 5, 10, 15, 20, sometimes upwards of 30. And I think you can machete that too, your shot multiplier. So it's lit right now. So after shark encounter, you see it lit. If I hit that right now, I get this little bonus point award thing. And after that, I believe then you got to hit the captive ball enough to clear the stand up targets behind there for plus 15 seconds. You do it again, that's your encounter bonus. And that's when you get the light gear. You do it again, and then you make your encounter worth 2x. An awesome nuance to this is, is you can still keep working that captive ball while you're in an encounter. So you, it's not just done just because you start your encounter. All right, there's an extra ball right there. Eight beachgoers, that's another thing to focus on as well. And we start night swim too. So we wanna shoot blue shots, faster shots, are worth 2x. And I believe, so the thing I need to check on, I don't know if it means 2x quicker through the mode or 2x points. I need to verify. 
All right, Shark Hunter, this is the video mode that you can access via the fish finder and that'll light on the right ramp. I have a tactic that I love to use on this. And what you'll see me do is I'm definitely going to try to farm the five shots. So there's the five shots right there. I always want to get that because it enables me to spam different shots. Also be aware of the extra ball that shows up. You want to get that too. And yeah, this is just a way to really start rolling through it. So I liked building up and then I start spamming towards the end to try to get my points going, especially if I can get my shots. So that's how I like to do it right there. Typically by utilizing that strategy, I find myself getting 50 million plus, plus the extra ball too. And again, there's that 3x machete just constantly showing up. Finished the quench challenge and then immediately drained. There you go. So that's very much for me. It's sometimes during this game, and I suffer from this too. It's the main thing to realize during this game is that you want to pick out your strategy and you want to try to stick to it as much as possible. Keith Elwin games definitely lend themselves to having a bunch of stuff going on at one time. And it's easy to get shiny light syndrome. You see the new shot light, and you sometimes get off your strategy and you try to go for that. And sometimes that's not the most optimal strategy. So I would consider that their skill shot level two because I dropped it right through the mini lane, did not hit any other switches. So we light gear right there. And I really wanted to do that because I want to get all my gear lit. And now I'm ready to go. So it's ball three. I'm going to go ahead and make this deal. I pronounce it deal or deal. Wherever you're, wherever you're wherever you're living in the country or the world. So I finished that up. I want to take my points and get out of Dodge. At this juncture in the game, and again, you know, you might be able to get to this point. You might not. Either way, it's perfectly fine. I just want everybody to see what happens once you get to get to this point, because now you have to make decisions. I have to decide. Am I going to go for rescue multiball? Am I going to go for bounty hunts? Am I going to go for fish finder targets? Personally, I decide I'm going to go like I'm all in on Jaws multiballs. And I really want to get through my Jaws multiball two and I want to get to Jaws multiball three. So that's really what I'm doing right here. If fish finder happens to light, I'm going to do it by accident by hitting the left stand up targets, but I'm not really going to go for it unless the opportunity just presents itself. So what you're seeing right there, I had to hit the left stand up targets in order to light my yellow shot to hit the barrel. If you get to this point and you're, you're saying to yourself, there's no more red shots out there. I'm hitting the chum bucket. I have no idea what's going on. Left stand-up targets right there. You see that yellow insert lit? You have to hit that in order to get your barrel ready. And then you have to do the harpoon. And you have to do that for both Jaws Multiball 2 and 3. And 3 is a little bit more difficult because you got to do it a few times. Or at least you have to get your harpoon attached a few times. So here we go. Three barrels attached. We are now in Jaws Multiball 2. And we also are closing the beaches, which we have not discussed really much, but I'm sure everybody out there watching this pretty much knows what that is by now. If you don't, it's just hitting the shark targets enough to light the orange inserts that's out there. You complete three of them, that beach is closed and you have a hurry up that's building up that you need to hit. Sometimes it's good to pay attention to it. Other times it's okay to let it go. Just depends where you're at in the game. The biggest thing I can say about rescue multiball is make sure if you're on the very last one, the beach is closed. It's okay if you mess up. Don't tilt out. I've done that before. If you miss it, no big deal. The multiball starts anyways. All right, Jaws multiball two. I'm not sure if this ends up being a good one. Still going for my add ball. But generally what you need to do here, you need to hit switches. And then after so many switches hit, you will light a jackpot. And then you saw me deploy my life ring right there. The reason why I did that, because I knew I was about to jailbreak and I needed protection. And right there, I had the life ring going, right hand side went out, didn't get it back. I've heard some reports of people saying that they're getting it back. I haven't seen it. Maybe it happened earlier in this gameplay. I didn't even notice it, but there's an example right there. Maybe I just missed it at that point. So we're out of the mode or out of the multi-ball. 
Wasn't really that great, but at least we know what to do. Jaws multi-ball two, hit a bunch of switches, hit a red shot as it's lit. Eventually, if you do well enough, you'll light up the shark and you'll get mega jackpots. You'll have victory combos and all that. We're just happening to not do that on this particular gameplay. Hurry up on the pond attack shot or the reel. We still got our 30 million right there. And I knew that that was lit and I opted to go for that instead of closing the beach because that was just worth more value. Now that I've closed that final beach, I have my last shot on the wave ramp. My final, uh, final beach goer to save right there. And as soon as I start this, definitely do not tilt right here. Just try to hit the shot. If you miss a shot, no problem. If it times out, multiple will still start. Once you get to this point, your flippers will just die and you're off to the races. The idea of this mode is to save all the beachgoers out there. You are the lifeguard. You're trying to save everybody because evidently you get paid enough to get into the water and go after beachgoers and sharks and everything. But yeah, that's kind of the lore of this mode. The blue insert that's lit, that represents a shark. So therefore you can rescue somebody in time. Another thing to look for is look at the LCD. At some point, you'll see a pretty funny Easter egg pop up. We'll wait to see it, see when it happens. Jamming through shots, right? There it is right there. You see the goat. <laughs> it's a nice little call call out to uh, Keith Elwin, the game designer right there. It's still trying to rescue, still trying to get jackpots. I'm definitely playing this mode too fast. I should be slowing down, but we're at the end of the game. I'm getting too excited. Just jamming away, because why not? And unfortunately, I could not beat the mode, did not rescue everybody, but you know what's great? Everybody gets eight, the beaches, they reopen. There you go. Now we can do it all over again. <laughs> all right, so at this point, I'm definitely trying to figure out what to do next because you notice the encounters are not there anymore. So I'm curious to tell, and I know somebody's gonna know this answer, so let me know down in the comments down below. If I hit that captive ball enough, or if I would have hit Quint Shack then, would my encounters light? Maybe so. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe you just got to get through rescue first. And then after rescue, it resets. I bet that's what it is. I bet that's what it is. But instead, we're just going to play through some fish finder modes. Try to get to Jaws Multiball 3. I know I start doing that at some point here. Which a good gear award to get right now would be Tracker. Just because 2x, right? 2x your chum. And right here, this is me figuring it out right now. Deciding where I want to go with the game. And at this point, we're just going to be all in for Jaws Multiball 3. Which is a placeholder right now, but it's worth a lot of points. If you get to this stage in the game, you're playing a launch party, you're there to win... This is probably what you need to be doing. Plus, if I get to 20 beachgoers, I'll relight Pippet. Our friendly dog that we want to save and not get eight ever. I'll let beachgoers get eight, but I will not let Pippet fall to Bruce the shark. Until I accidentally miss, and then I do. All right, closing beaches here. So again beaches for those that are still trying to understand this concept definitely hit the yellow targets that are out there shark tower targets that will light the orange inserts all right now we got binoculars so i'm thinking the same thing too i'm wanting to get to another rescue and we got pippet lit as you can tell on the right hand side and we have our machete lit as well which will be our shot multiplier so there goes the shot multiplier and we hit pippet Hopefully they gave points. We don't get to see it on the LCD screen, but it felt good. I'll have to recheck after I watch this whether or not I got the points or not. Pretty sure I did. I don't know. All right, we got the dart. We're also in cast and catch, which is the center ramp and right ramp. Upwards, hurry ups. 
You want to wait until it's past 20 million, 22 million, and then take the shot. I'm, it's easier for me to do that on the left-hand side than the right-hand side. If you are trying to maximize your value out of that mode, you could just ski jump and not hit the right ramp. And then that way you could kind of like bump it back over to the left-hand side, then hit the right ramp. So it'd be center ramp, ski jump, bump back to the left side, then hit the right ramp. That timing works sometimes as well. Just different tactics you can use in the game. And you could do that with skill shot or quick shots also. Whenever that ball comes screaming back down the left-hand side, hold up that left flipper, give it a ski jump over, and then instead of cradling on the right side, bump it back over to the left because you gotta take a shot at that fin target anyway since it's timed. That's another way you could do it. But again, mileage may vary depending on what setup you're on, how tight the tilt is, what the pitch is, what the flipper fill is, a lot of things that go into it. All right, Orca spelled, Quinn's challenge is lit on the right in lane. We're also starting feeding frenzy. We're also getting our fish finder. Just like we talked about earlier, a lot of things can get going at one time because we're also trying to get our harpoon for Jaws Multiball 3. We're trying to get on that shark fin and we got to hit on the fly. So we got that, that's barrel two. You see barrel three out there flashing. We got to complete that just to get our barrels on the shark. This would be a big point too, especially with Feeding Frenzy rolling because we cannot start that anymore during a multiball. You have to start it before your multiball. All right, there's Final Harpoon. Now we gotta hit any yellow shot out there and we will start Jaws Multiball 3. And I did have Super Life Ring running in the background the whole entire time, ignored it. Didn't even notice it even while talking right here. But we won't worry about that for now. Now we're in Jaws Multiball 3. A total placeholder right now. This is not gonna be the way the mode's gonna be forever. But for a launch party, if you get to this point, it's time to just pedal down. Just slam on the gas, start jamming out on any red shot that's lit because it's gonna be worth pretty considerable points at this point in the game. And if you have machetes, do that as well. I'm ignoring it right now, but optimal play would be trapping up, hitting the left stand-up targets, and using your play field or your shot multiplier. I got a feeling though that that shot multiplier during multi-ball is probably gonna be nerfed a little bit just because you could technically spam it and build up your points a lot. I could see it switching just being a one-time use, which would make would make sense. Unfortunately, we're out of, oh no, we're not. Forgot, head barrel. So we got that. I was thinking I'm out of the multi-ball. No, we get to play some more. And we make a slide save as well. So let's talk about slide saves for a few. Might as well, since it's there. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people that struggle with that very move, but the reality is is that you have a debounce on these stern machines. And so if you make a quick move, oftentimes you can get away with it, even if the till is fairly tight. If there's rubber feet on, be careful. Doesn't work as well. If you're on concrete, be prepared to go for a ride. If you wanna see hilarity, just ask Josh Sharp about how he did Congo a few years ago. That game ended up completely at a 45 degree angle and off camera. <laughs> All right, we're still rocking. Got our flip lock. And now knowing that we have flip lock again, the tactic is avoid the wave ramp until it's necessary. Because if it goes up and all the way, then you waste your flip lock. You don't want to do that. So whenever you do get a flip lock going, aim for center ramp and then your right ramp. Because if you hit wave ramp or your real shot, it will go to your upper flipper and you'll just be trapped with two balls. So you saw how much that value is worth, 791. It is definitely worth playing. If you have a chance to get the Jaws Multiball 3 as it is right now, and I'm sure it'll be the same way in the future, play it. It's worth a lot of points. And in a launch party, if you want to win, you want to score more points than another person. I know, shocking, isn't it? Another quench challenge, shooting flashing combos. And you'll always hit yellow shots on the combo. You don't have to hit the first one immediately. You can wait to hit it, but once you do hit it, the combo has started and you need to complete it from there. Otherwise it'll time out. As you saw, I just timed out right there. At this point, we're pretty much to the end game for the game itself. 
just because there's not there's no wizard modes outside of I guess if you count rescue multiball as a mini wizard mode, but there's no no capturing the great white, no fourth of July, that insert hasn't been used yet. And I think there's one other thing out there. Whatever that badge is that's by there. I don't think that's in use right now. But hey, that's okay. We're still gonna play. We're gonna try to get our I guess our bounty here. Again, I struggle bust on this all the time. It's not easy to do at all. It's not a gimme like it was on 0 .84. 0 .84 is like, okay, I'm going to get the shark no matter what. We'll be good. All right, we're at 1%. Now, just got to hit that shark. Okay, we hit the shark. Got to hit him one more time. And we got a life ring too. If we hit that shark right now, shark strings at one. We'll capture. We did it. Thank the pinball gods. Now we are in Celebration Multiball. In Celebration Multiball, you get to hear an awesome soundtrack, which I'm going to be quiet right now so you can hear it. All right, so when you're in that mode, what you want to do generally is just hit hit all the shots. That's all you want to do. Hit combo shots, keep it going, cash it in at the shark. Unless that's victory combos. Might be both. I don't know. I'll have to check back and see if I got that right. I was too enamored with the music. That's what it was. Whoever did the music and the sound on here, great, excellent job. It's... I am pleasantly surprised with how the soundtrack and the sound is with this game. Just little nuances with it. So encounter's still not lighting, but hey, we can complete it for a 2x. But I'm not going to aim for that because we got to close the beaches. But the only thing I could pretty much do at this point in the game, or at least that I'm focused on personally, is just rescue and fish finders. That's what I'm doing. But either way, I believe we're probably getting pretty close to the end here. I would just say, moving forward in the future, if you watch this whole video, thank you so much. I greatly do appreciate it. And also keep in mind too, it's okay if you don't put up a billion on this game. It's okay if you don't put up 500 million. The bottom line is, is as long as you're having fun, that's all that truly matters. And on top of that, hopefully you can watch these videos and at least get an idea for what some of the features do in the game. And you can start to develop your own strategy and your own approach to these games. I think that's the most important thing. And we have a flipper fumble to end the game. Of course, why not? But that's it. So thank you guys so much. I greatly do appreciate it. Be sure, get out there, do your launch party, destroy it, do everything you can. Let me know how it goes and hopefully you guys do well. Other than that, we're just gonna do the outro and be gone. Later guys. Ha, 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 ha.